Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the replication cycle of the influenza virus. Okay, so so far what we've discussed is that uh, the influenza virus will come to the host cell, the hemagglutinin molecule will bind to sialic acid residue, well, sialic acid molecules in uh, the membrane of the host cell. That will then trigger uh, receptor-mediated endocytosis, and um, the virus particle will go into an endosome. Then, the endosome will be acidified. This will have two effects. One, it will cause the conformational change in hemagglutinin, which then leads to the fusion of the endosome membrane with the viral envelope. Two, the protons will go through the M2 ion channel into the viral particle and will break down the capsid proteins of the nuclear capsid, releasing the um, RNA genome and the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So when these two membranes do fuse, the viral envelope with the endosome, the nuclear capsid has broken down as well. So what is released into the cytoplasm of the host cell is this RNA genome with this RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. What happens next then? Okay, so let's draw our cell, our host cell again, and let's see what happens next. So, if this is the nucleus of the cell here, the RNA genome and the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase will go to the nucleus of the host cell. So they're going to go to the nucleus. So here's the RNA genome and here's the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And you should be able to guess what's going to happen next. At the moment, this is useless, this piece of um, RNA, uh, of negative sense RNA. We need to turn it into positive sense RNA so that we can actually produce proteins. So what's going to happen is this RNA-dependent RNA polymerase enzyme is going to synthesize the positive sense RNA from this negative sense RNA. So I'll draw this in orange, and remember this is the complementary RNA to um, the uh, negative sense RNA. So this in orange is now a piece of positive sense RNA. Okay, so positive sense RNA. Right. Okay, so what's going to happen next then? Uh, well, we're going to use the positive sense RNA to do two things. Firstly, what we're going to do is copy the positive sense RNA with the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And what will we get if we copy this positive sense RNA? We'll get more of the negative sense RNA. So that's how we're going to replicate our genome. We'll make the positive sense RNA from the negative sense. Then we'll copy the positive sense back to get more negative sense. So this is going to firstly... So we're going to make the positive sense from this. And then what we can do from this positive sense is firstly, we can make more negative sense. So here are loads of copies of our um, negative sense RNA. So we've copied our genome in effect here. We've got loads of the genome. In addition, what it can do is it can go into the uh, cytoplasm of the cell. Okay. And it can go to the ribosomes of the cell. And this is what is meant by hijacking the cellular machinery. It's going to use the cell's own machinery to make proteins. In addition, I mean already, it's used the cell's um, uh, RNA nucleotides to copy this RNA. That's uh, why it went to the nucleus to gain access to the RNA nucleotides. Okay, So now it's going to actually use the cell's ribosomes in order to make its proteins. So in comes the positive sense viral RNA here. And basically, the host cell's ribosomes are just going to make the proteins for these um, viral positive sense RNAs. So out come the proteins. Now, what sort of proteins are you going to make? Well, firstly, you're going to make more copies of this RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So you're going to make more RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which I'll draw here in pink. Okay, so you're going to make more of that. Okay. You're going to make the capsid proteins that you need in order to make the, uh, the casing that the virus is in. So we're going to make capsid proteins. So how shall I draw these? I'll draw them as just capsids here. Okay, so we're going to make more capsids. 
Then we're going to make the proteins that were going to go into the viral envelope. And where are these going to be sent? Well, they're going to be sent to the cell membrane. And you'll see the reason for this when we discuss the budding off. But I'll basically, I'll, hint for, I'll give you a little bit of insight now. When we construct new virus particles, what we're going to do is we're going to construct, well, we're going to take a, uh, a negative sense RNA um, genome here. So we're going to take one of these. We're going to take one of these RNA-dependent RNA polymerases that we've made here, and we're going to put them inside of a capsid. Okay, so that will make the nucleocapsid of the influenza virus. Th so I'll, I'll actually draw this happening as we're, since we're discussing it now. So we can assemble now these nucleocapsids. Now, how are we actually going to get these nucleocapsids out of the cell? Well, they're going to have to bud off the membrane, so they're going to push out this membrane. And when they do, what they're overall going to end up doing is taking a coating of the membrane with them, basically. Okay, so let me just colour things in. So here is our new nuclear capsid that we've now produced. Okay, and when this comes out of the membrane, what it will do is a process known as budding. So it will push the membrane off in an evagination like this and the nucleocapsid will be at the center here. And then eventually what will happen is this membrane will pinch off here and you'll get a whole uh, new viral envelope being produced from the cell's membrane. So the virus particle basically uses the cell membrane in order to create its new viral envelopes. Okay, for that reason, if we want our viral membranes to have the hemagglutinin protein and the neuraminidase protein and the M2 ion channel, which we know are essential for this virus particle actually being able to perform its life cycle next time, we need to put them in the cell membrane. So what we do is we create these proteins. So here's hemagglutinin, here's neuraminidase, here, which we haven't yet seen the function of, but we will do. Uh, and here's the M2 ion channel here. Okay, uh, and all of them are going to be sent to the cell membrane, basically. So here's neuraminidase in green here. So I will just label it up as NA for neuraminidase. Okay, here is hemagglutinin here in red. Okay, and I'll label this up as HA for hemagglutinin. Okay, and then finally I'll label this one up with M2 for M2 ion channel. Okay, and I'll cover that one in blue. Okay, so we make all of these proteins. We make the RNA-dependent RNA polymerases, we make the capsid proteins, and we make uh, the membrane proteins of the viral envelope, which we send to the membrane of the cell. Now what we do is, as I've discussed, we assemble the new virion particles, we assemble the new nuclear capsids. We take a piece of negative sense RNA, we take an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, we build a capsid around them, we then have our nuclear capsid. That pushes out on the membrane in a process known as budding, okay? And if we have covered the cell membrane with these hemagglutinin, neuraminidase, and M2 proteins, then what will happen is you'll end up with hemagglutinin, neuraminidase, and M2 ion channel proteins in the uh, portion of the membrane that the uh, virion particle has stolen, basically. So it's going to get the proteins that it wanted in its um, viral envelope. Okay, so here's hemagglutinin in red, here's neuraminidase, this mushroom-shaped protein in green. Oops. Um, here's the M2 ion channel in blue over here. Okay, right. What then will finally happen is this uh, new virion particle will pinch off. So this membrane will pinch off. And then you'll have the virion particle here next to the membrane. The problem comes now. And finally, we're going to see the point of neuraminidase. The problem is that this virion particle that you've just produced has hemagglutinin in its membrane. And this cell has sialic acid in its membrane. So this is the problem, basically. The hemagglutinin is going to bind to the sialic acid. Um, and what color should I draw sialic acid in? I'll do it in orange, because we haven't used orange for a while. It's going to bind to the sialic acid of this cell that is already infected. Now, does this virion particle, which has just come out of a cell that's already infected, want to go back into that cell? No, of course it doesn't. Uh, that cell is already being used 
um, to make virus particles. It wants to go and find uh, a new place to set up residence, basically. So it doesn't want to go into the same cell. So you need a way of basically detaching the hemagglutinin from uh, the sialic acid, which is in the membrane of the cell that you've just uh, come out of. This is the function of this neuraminidase enzyme here in green. Neuraminidase is going to chop off, it's going to break down the sialic acid, and it's basically going to free the virus particle from the sialic acid that it's bound to. So this is the role of this enzyme, neuraminidase. Okay, it basically allows the virus particle to leave uh, the host cell. Uh, if it weren't for neuraminidase, what would happen is you bud off all these new virus particles and they'd all just stick to the cell that they'd just come off. And even worse, they'd start re-entering the cell that they'd just budded off, uh, which isn't a very effective way of um, spreading the virus, basically. Okay, so uh, what instead happens is that this enzyme neuraminidase breaks the uh, sialic acid down and allows the hemagglutinin to be released from this sialic acid. Okay, and to illustrate how important neuraminidase is, you can block it with certain drugs. So there are two drugs, um, well there are more than that, but there are two very famous drugs used to block neuraminidase. One is known as ozeltamivir. Okay, ozeltamivir. And this is often more commonly known by its brand name, which is Tamiflu. So when you take Tamiflu, if you do ever take Tamiflu, I've never taken it, but if you do take Tamiflu, then the way it's working is by blocking the neuraminidase enzymes of the viral, um, of the influenza particles, and therefore blocking the enzyme from actually leaving the cell that it's already infected. So the influenza basically sticks onto the cell that it's just come out of, and it's going to reinfect that cell, and therefore you're going to hugely uh, reduce the spread of the virus to other cells of the body. A drug which does the same thing is Zanamivir. Zanamivir. Uh, again, the brand name for Zanamivir is Relenza. Okay, so both of these drugs block the neuraminidase enzyme from functioning. The influenza particles then remain tethered to the host cell that they've just left, and it stops the spread of the virus hugely.